prices of new cars are going crazy. Back in the day, you could get a Honda CRV or an equivalent crossover for 20,000 euro, then it was 35,000. And these days, 50 grand is nothing out of the ordinary. But what if I told you that for 34,000 euro, you could drive out of a showroom in a brand new SUV, which also happens to have equipment like a car costing additional 25K? This is the Bike Beijing 7. Let's see if it's any good. The Beijing 7 is yet another Chinese novelty on the European market. Manufactured by Bike Motor, the Beijing 7 is also known as the Bike X7 in some markets. And I suspect that in those markets, BMW has little to say about the letter X before the 7. Consequently, it may also be called the Bike X75, Sonova X75, Beijing X75. The Chinese auto industry is growing so fast that it has no time to establish a coherent model naming strategy. A few months ago, I reviewed a slightly smaller Beijing 5, which may also be called the X5 or the X55, which at first glance is very similar to the Beijing 7, but only from the outside. Measuring nearly 475 centimeters in length, the Beijing 7 is more than 12 centimeters longer than the Beijing 5 and has 6.5 centimeters longer wheelbase. Other dimensions are similar. Visually, the Beijing 7 expands on the Beijing 5. There is an even larger and bolder radiator grille. Lighting stretches across the entire width of the front and the rear. The diamond motif appears again in the headlights and the rear lamps, although this time it is not reflected in the radiator grille as it was in the 5. And on the side we have the same treatment as on the smaller model. The roofline, cut off by a silver trim, seems to float above the car. And the black plastic trim along the bottom and the wheel arches and the bumpers visually slims down the car's silhouette. From a distance, at a certain angle, you could mistake this car for a raised estate rather than an SUV. Only from the rear it is clear this is not an estate after all. The high rear window line and the large tailgate make the car look taller than the 171 centimeters we see in the spec sheet. And the illuminated trim running across the entire width brings to mind the new Range Rover models. Only the Beijing nameplate betrays that it is not, for example, the new Range Rover Evoque. Beijing has some sort of a proximity lock, unlock and tailgate open, which I'm not a fan of. So I will now leave. The car will lock, hopefully. OK, and now I can return to the car. And as I stand here talking nonsense, the tailgate should eventually open. And I know Hyundai and Kia have this sort of thing. It's less bad, but it's still quite annoying. What's wrong with just touching the door handle, pressing the button. It works just as well. Or what's wrong with this foot under the bumper? Here, like in some Renault models, disabling what Beijing calls smart locking makes unlocking and locking the doors possible only with the key, even though there's a place on the door handles that suggests a touch sensor. While the door handles on the Beijing 5 popped out at an angle, like on the current generation Toyota CHR, the door handles on the Beijing 7 extend all the way like on a Range Rover. I would have preferred normal door handles, but at least these retract quietly, something that cannot be said about Toyota. Also, listen to the sound of the doors closing. This is Mercedes quality stuff. According to the specifications, the boot capacity is 410 liters above the floor and 450 liters, including underfloor storage. The Beijing 5 allegedly had just 350 liters, but according to my measurements, it was just about 400 liters and my suitcase also fit in lengthwise and the underfloor storage compartment also accommodated the cargo cover. The Beijing 7 doesn't have the styrofoam insert that covered the mini spare wheel in the 5. 
There are still no shopping bag hooks nor any other anchor points to secure luggage, but there are two niches on the side where you could store, for example, a bottle of windshield washer fluid. There is an internal button to close the tailgate, but you might just as well use the external one since it's handy, but it does take a while for the tailgate to open and close. The doors cover the sills and the door pockets are bigger than in the 5. Also, there is a lot of legroom, much more than in the 5, and I get the impression that the main advantage of the Beijing 7 over Beijing 5 is the rear legroom. It might be a selling point in China, where being chauffeured is a sign of luxury, but in Europe I suppose people would rather have more boot space and maybe a sliding bench. There is none of that here because in order to fold the rear backrest flat, you will have to lift the seat cushions first. On the plus side, the backrest angle is adjustable, there are large cup holders in the armrest, there are also AC vents and underneath are a 12 volt socket and a USB-A port. A bit low so the middle passenger can hit them with their foot, but the floor is completely flat so that person sitting in the middle will be more comfortable than in many other crossovers regardless of the price point. I've seen heated and ventilated rear seats in Beijing 7 on Bikes International website, but these are unavailable here in Poland. Let me know if Beijing 7x7x75 or whatever it's called in your market gets this option. The Chinese automotive industry is growing so fast, there is no time not only for coherent model naming, but also for consistent interior design, and I don't mind because I have something to talk about. But if you get used to one model and want to upgrade to another, you'll have to learn everything from scratch. Now, here we have not two, but three displays. First is the driver's display, which shows data from the onboard computer, driver assistance systems, in addition to the usual speedometer and tachometer. Second is the central display on top of the dashboard, where we have uh, multimedia settings and the 360 camera. And third is the lower central display, which at first glance looks like it's only for air conditioning settings, but hidden in a, another menu are the seat settings. I'll start with the seats. Just like in the Beijing 5, the seats in the 7 are too short and I'm only 175 centimeters tall. But in the 7, the passenger gets a fold-out footrest, so on longer trips they're more comfortable. The hidden seat menu not only features seat memory settings, but also controls seat heating, ventilation, as well as massage. As far as the central display is concerned, there is clearly room on it for much more information and options, but in Poland we only get radio, Bluetooth and the Carbit Link app, which enables screen mirroring from your phone. So you might just as well get a good phone holder and use Android Auto and your favorite music apps straight off the phone. The logic of the infotainment system menu takes time and patience, but after clicking through the system, I found most of the settings I was looking for. The only thing I can't figure out is how to make the system not mute the playback audio source when the car is in reverse. It does that and the audio comes back on only after you've been driving a while forwards and the parking sensors turn off. Now, while browsing through various vehicle settings, I found somewhere an option to close the windows and a panoramic roof automatically when it rains assuming you leave your car with windows and the roof open and lock the car. A drizzle won't do a trick, but if there will be a downpour, you will still have to wipe the seats, but that's still better than leaving the car with the roof and the windows open in the rain for hours. The door pockets are good size. There's a wireless charging cubby for your phone under the center console. The cup holders are surprisingly tight and hidden in an odd storage compartment under the armrest. It's as if the designers couldn't decide which way to go, so they put cup holders, another removable and sliding cup holder tray. They made the armrest storage open, but then added a sliding cover, but only for the exposed part. And for that reason, this storage compartment is not chilled as it was on the Beijing 5. The glove box is average size. On the center console we also have a start button, hazard light switch, the parking brake button and the drive selector lever which is different from the one on the 5 and in my opinion is less ergonomic. 
but it's probably a matter of getting used to it. According to the Polish importer, the Beijing 7 is powered by the same turbocharged 4-cylinder 1.5-liter petrol engine with 177 horsepower as the Beijing 5. Meanwhile, the Baig website claims that the 7 engine should have several more horsepower. Either way, it is Baig motor powertrain's own design. According to the manufacturer, the average fuel consumption should be 9.5 liters per 100 kilometers combined, and that's more or less what I've been getting. The Beijing 7 is roughly the size of a Honda CRV or the Mazda CX-60, so a relatively small engine without hybrid support has a lot of weight to pull around. If that kind of fuel economy worries you, the Polish importer will soon offer an autogas conversion, which allows you to keep the manufacturer's five-year warranty. What is it like in your market? The manufacturer promises 0 to 100 km per hour time of 9.9 .9 seconds. I managed to get 9.1 seconds in both sport and normal modes. It was dry and warm, and traction control intervened gently when taking off, as the Beijing 7 only comes in front-wheel drive form. The 7-speed dual-clutch transmission is a bit jerky, at least at first. I had the same experience in the Beijing 5. I can't tell if it's a matter of transmission being cold at first, or getting used to the fact that the Chinese don't care too much about emissions and don't thwart the engines with software like European manufacturers have to. Also, there is no start-stop system. The Beijing 7 is only 100 kg heavier than the Beijing 5, but the 1.5-liter engine also has to deal with more drag. The Beijing 7 is not necessarily a car for long high-speed travels, but more for city traffic. It's also not particularly dynamic. Like the Beijing 5, also the Beijing 7 seems to be well soundproofed, but only in the lower half of the body. There is no acoustic windscreen and no acoustic side windows, so at motorway speeds it tends to get loud inside, too loud for my liking. The handling is pleasant enough, the suspension dumpens bumps well, and the car is stable-ish in a straight line, because if you take a corner too quickly, the car will understeer, and probably all-wheel drive would mitigate, at least help mitigate this, but there is just one drivetrain option. On the plus side, compared to the 5, the Beijing 7 has much better driver assistance systems. The adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assistance is actually usable this time. And the blind spot monitoring doesn't beep at me every time another vehicle approaches. There is just a little light in the mirror. On the other hand, all this is still not as efficient as trustworthy as I would like. When cars in front start braking rapidly, I didn't have enough balls to wait for the systems in the Beijing to react. I had to start braking myself, otherwise I would end up rear-ending the car in front. And I tested this several times and this is how the system works, or rather doesn't. The automatic parking system has a better interface in the 7 than in the 5, but as far as the actual parking maneuvers are concerned, I wouldn't rely on it either. Everything takes ages and you still end up parked at an angle and way too close to other cars. That's if you don't stop the automatic parking maneuver yourself because you wouldn't want to damage your car or someone else's car. Bike doesn't seem to have a big European presence. I found some units of the 7 or X75 in Germany for about 34,000 euro. In Poland it cost 38,000. It's significantly cheaper than the base trims of the Honda CRV or the Mazda CX60, and adding equivalent equipment to these models puts them in a totally different price league. The Beijing 7 surprised me on several levels. It is a very cheap very well equipped crossover, especially taking into account its size. However, I'd expect a car 
this big to offer optional third row of seats or maybe all-wheel drive or a powertrain better suited to this type of vehicle like a diesel. On the other hand, you're getting a large car with a five-year warranty and you're pocketing enough money to get yourself another crossover, a small one, like the Beijing 3 maybe. <laughs> and what do you think about the Beijing 7? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like my sarcastic, down-to-earth and possibly mildly amusing car reviews, join me every Friday at 3 p.m. Central European time and don't forget to subscribe and like this video as it helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.